Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to the 15th machine learning tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about um, is kind of shuffling up of our data. So if we look at our information here, um, this is the, the directory that we're using in here in key stats. And basically what our, what our program is doing is it's running through um, each of these stocks one by one to create this data frame. So it starts with A and goes all the way down and blah, 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 blah. And the issue that we're having, so for say analysis here when we go to test, is so we're saying test size is 1,000. So when we go to train this data um, on this row, when we go to train this data, we're saying we want to train you know to the minus 1,000th value. Well, that basically uh, means that what we're doing is we're training say from A to maybe let's say uh, down to here, NVDA, which I think is NVIDIA. So we're training on these stocks and then we're testing on these stocks. So we're training on stocks that aren't quite the same. Now, in some respects, that's a good idea, right? You would train on other companies and see if the kind of insights that you make on other companies are applicable to the insights on completely fresh companies that we've never even tested on. So, to to some degree, that kind of makes sense to do it that way, but to another degree, it doesn't. What we're actually trying to do is we're testing against S&P 500 companies, period. Uh, so we don't necessarily want to test on specific or uh, test on different companies that were than what we trained on. We're really just trying to test against just randomized or shuffled S&P 500 data because we're not really uh, we're not like. We're not taking it any further than we're just saying S&P 500 companies. So I suppose there's a bit of a philosophical debate that could be had as far as what's the better uh, methodology. But I would say this is actually um, a slightly flawed method of you know training on these and then just testing on this handful of companies. When in theory, what we ought to do is kind of shuffle everything after we've valued everything. So after we've built the data set basically and calculated you know, underperform out form, we would want to shuffle up that data a little bit because right now it's organized basically by, um, like not only is it organized to the, by a company like this, like say A to this, our data is also somewhat organized by year. So it goes from newest to oldest and all of that. So uh, just for a bunch of reasons, it, it can be useful to shuffle the data. So that's what we're going to be covering uh, in this video. So um, the first question is, you know, how might we actually do this? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is come down here and we're going to comment out the calling of analysis. And we're going to create a new function just to make sure our shuffling works. Because what we want to do is shuffle the rows, but we want to have the column data shuffle with the rows, right? So we want all that data to be the same. Because all we care about is row by row. And we basically, each feature is the entire row of data. So that's what we're trying to shuffle. So we're going to do define uh, randomizing. We'll do empty parameters. And we're just going to create a, a quick data frame. So we're going to say data frame equals PD dot data frame. And this will be a data frame. And we're just going to have um, data one. And data one is going to be a range uh, five. And then we're going to have uh, D2 for data two. And again, this will just be a range of five. So now we can uh, print out this DF just to kind of see. So now we'll call randomizing. Apparently that took a long time. Let's see. Uh, what did we uh, do wrong here? Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, so D1, it's a dictionary, basically. So D1 colon and then D2 colon range like that. OK, so here we have a nicely organized 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is obviously our index and then our uh, columns. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we're going to say DF2 equals DF dot re index. And we're going to re index based on a random permutation of the index. Because as you can see, the index was just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can do that by going NP dot random dot permutation. And we're going to say a permutation of the df.index. So now we can print df2. And oh. <laughs> 
One moment, let's see what we've done here. Do you have two? What do you guys think is the odds of that one? Let's let's try one more time. I'm just not buying it. Wow, that was so crazy. We didn't okay, so we didn't change anything. But it just so happened to be the random <laughs> the random permutation the first time through was the identical Okay. Sure. Anyway, so the second example is is an example of a permutation. I mean, a, a random permutation can indeed be the identical uh, version, but anyway, let's run that one more time. And yeah, so we're seeing different stuff. Wow, that was pretty funny. I was like, surely I didn't like rename it or print DF still. Uh, so still randoms. Anyway, uh, so that's a randomizing function. And anyway, you can see basically though that the index always equals the data in the columns. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We just want to make sure that that's what we're doing. So now, uh, really, we just need this command right here, and we have to basically input that into our uh, main function up here. So build data set here, um, and then before you call what x the capital x equals just like right up here is where we're going to call the next bit so it'll be data underscore df equals data uh, underscore df dot reindex and we reindex the same way as before np dot random dot permutation and then it's a permutation of the data df dot index and that should be it so now what we can do is we're basically done with this randomizing. We just wanted to build a, a quick and simple function to make sure our logic there was going to work. And now we'll go to analysis and we'll run our analysis. And we see our accuracy is 67%. And uh, we can actually, we'll come back up here and let's just actually comment that out and let's see if there's any major difference. Um, so s we should probably run it a few times. So this will be... Uh, It's interesting that we get the exact same accuracy every time. You should actually have some degree of variation uh, to your accuracy, but it doesn't look like we do. Uh, so anyway, let's uncomment this out real quick. It's so weird that the other one has absolutely no no degree of accuracy. See, every time you, you train and test, there's highly likely to be a, a degree of uh, randomness there. Uh, we'll actually see that further on down the road, and, and there may be an actual issue in our code as to why we aren't having any degree of um, random. Because obviously this is random, right? But even even not shuffling it, I would imagine would get you some randomness, but not seeing any. Anyway, uh, with the shuffle, apparently our ac actual accuracy has gone up quite a bit, and that's probably uh, because we are no longer training and testing on completely different subjects. We have a much better data set here. Um, so anyway, so we're looking at about, you know, the mid six, mid to upper 60s. So that's, that's actually pretty good um, for, for what we have here. And that's accuracy based on uh, whether or not it was an underperformer or outperform. So accuracy doesn't necessarily mean you would be, you know, you would make 10% on every investment, right? That's not true. <laughs> so accuracy does not equal profit from trading. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, more in detail later on. So we actually will build a back testing um, program to, to actually test this in, in, in reality, say you were investing based on this strategy. So anyways, uh, that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you guys shuffling up the data a little bit uh, because I think that makes it a bit more accurate. Although some people may choose to go ahead and remain um, not shuffling the data, so you test on different companies. Uh, but what you also might want to think about doing if you are going to do that is you would actually want to shuffle by company then because right now it's going in alphabetical order. So what you would probably want to do if you're wanting to test on different companies is, well, we've already built the back tester. Uh, but you would want to, or we've already built, sorry, the uh, data building. But um, what you would want to do is in that script where we have stock list, it's a list of names, shuffle those names, and then you could you could do something like that. That way you're, you're training and testing on different uh, companies entirely if that's what you want to do. Uh, but right now, basically what you really truly want to avoid is training and testing on the exact same data. 
that's what you're trying to avoid. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's the same company, but you can test and train on different companies just to see. As you can see, uh, we were close to 60% accurate, but uh, obviously training and testing on a shuffled up data set is a little more accurate. And since we're potentially investing in the same companies as we're training on, I think it just makes more sense to train on them. But anyways, to each their own. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments on this uh, tutorial video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and the donations. And until next time.